Welcome to Choice Tech. You will learn to solve the divisor game problem using dynamic programming in this video. I have taken this problem from lead code and you can check it out too by going through the link given in the description of this video. Now let's see what the problem statement of the divisor game is. There are two people, Alice and Bob, who are playing a game. The game is such that Alice and Bob are given a number n. Alice has been given the privilege to make the first move. In every move, two things happen. Number one, a player can choose any number x provided that uh, x is greater than 0 and less than n. And when n is divided by x, the remainder should come out as 0. Number two is when a player has chosen x, then n is replaced with n minus x. So let's say n is 3. Alice starts first and she can choose any number greater than 0 and less than 3. So she has two choices, 1 and 2. Now the second condition is that when 3 is divided by the number she chooses, then the remainder should come out as 0. Hence, 1 is that number that gives the remainder as 0 and it divides 3. At the end of this move, 3 gets replaced by 2, which is 3 minus 1. Now, Bob gets to make his move. The only number that is greater than 0 and less than 2 is 1. 2 divided by 1 yields 0 as the remainder, so that's correct. At the end of Bob's move, n is replaced with 1, which is 2 minus 1. It's Alice's chance again in the game now, but she has nothing left because nothing is greater than 0 and less than 1, no integer. So Alice loses. This declares that Alice will lose when n is 3. The main ask of the divisor game problem is that given an n in the divisor game, you need to return true if Alice wins the game, else false. Now, both players are going to play this game optimally. You are free to assume that. I hope the problem statement is clear to you. Let's now solve this problem using dynamic programming. If you are new to my channel and if you want to do something big in programming and algorithms, then hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon because that way you won't miss out on these dynamic programming videos I create. Now to solve the division game problem, the first thing that comes to my mind is creating an array of n plus one cells. We are going to consider n as 6. So I'm going to create an array of 7 cells. Let me create it quickly. You would ask how I came up with this because I have solved the coin game winner problem using dynamic programming, which has given me a lot of idea of how to solve a problem like divisor game. You can watch it by clicking on the I button. We'll start with the cell at index 1. Index 1 suggests that n is 1. We just saw moments ago that when n is 1, Alice can't win the game. So we'll populate false in here straight away. Alright. Now let's move to the next cell where n is 2. We are going to place two variables thus n and x. n will be placed under the cell which is our current n and x will be placed under 1 and will start moving towards n. So let's quickly place uh, n over here and x over here. I'm reiterating at this point in time, x is 1 and n is 2. So we divide 2 by 1 and we get 0 as the remainder, which means Alice can choose x as 1. We only have to make sure whether she can win the game or not. To do that, we calculate n minus x, which is 2 minus 1. 1 and the result comes out as 1. So we come to the cell at index 1. Here the value is false. Why we have false here? It's because if n is 1 then Alice cannot win. But here when n is 1 it's Bob's move. So this false is for Bob which means when n is 1 and Bob has to make the first move he cannot win. And this suggests that in this case, Alice will fit. Therefore, the thing to note is if the value in the cell at index n minus x is false, then Alice wins the game. That is why we are going to populate true in this cell. Now, when we have found 
that Ellis can win by choosing uh, X as 1, we don't have to choose any other X. We are satisfied. And so we move to the next cell. Now, N becomes 3. X is 1. And uh, 3 divided by 1 gives the remainder as 0. Okay. So Alice can choose X as 1 now. Now we are going to calculate N minus X. So we will subtract 1 from 3. That will give us 2. So we move to the cell at index 2. At the cell with index 2, the value stored is true. Bob has to make the move now. And when N is 2, it suggests that Bob will win if he makes the first move, which means that Alice cannot win if N is 3. So we put false in this cell. Since uh, Alice cannot win with X as 1, we are going to try another value. So X is going to move further. And this time X becomes 2. 3 divided by 2 doesn't give the remainder as 0. Hence, Alice cannot choose 2 and she is out of options now. There are no more values to choose between 0 and 3 for Alice. Hence, when n is 3, Alice can't win this game. Alright, now n moves to 4 and x gets back to its base position. 4 divided by 1 gives the remainder as 0. Hence, Alice can choose x as 1. Now we calculate n minus x. So 4 minus 1 gives us 3. We move to the cell at index 3. Here the value is false. Alright. The value false in this cell suggests that Alice can win the game. So we are going to populate true in this cell. And once we have found out that Alice can win the game by choosing x as 1, why would we want to make another move? So now n moves further and becomes 5. n is 5, x is 1. 5 divided by 1 gives the remainder as 0. That means Alice can choose 1. 5 minus 1, that means n minus x gives us 4. So we move to this cell at index 4. Here the value is true. That means Alice cannot win the game because when n is going to be 4 and Bob is allowed to make the first move, he will win. Okay. We are taking the help of previous sub problems here. You must have noticed it by now. That's how dynamic programming algorithm works. So let's populate false in this cell. All right. Now x moves further. Here the value is 2. 5 divided by 2 doesn't give the remainder as 0, hence Alice cannot choose x as 2. So x is now going to move further and it becomes 3. 5 divided by 3, again it doesn't give out the remainder as 0, hence Alice cannot choose 3. So x moves further and it now becomes 4. 5 divided by 4, again. It doesn't give the remainder as 0, hence Alice cannot choose 4 as x or x as 4. And she loses the divisor game when n is 5. And now becomes 6 and x gets back to its base position. 6 divided by 1 is going to give the remainder as 0, hence Alice can choose x as 1. 6 minus 1 gives us 5. We go to the cell at index 5. Here the value is false. And what this false suggests? That Alice can win the game. And that is why we are going to populate true over here. And since Alice can win by choosing x as 1, why would we try any other move? We will declare that Alice will win the game if n is 6 and Alice is allowed to make the first move. So this is the dynamic programming algorithm to solve the problem of divisor game. Let's now look into the Java program that solves the problem of divisor game. You can see that I have declared and initialized a variable n to 6. Then I have uh, created an array, db array, which is going to have 7 items. You can see that I have used n plus 1 over here. These are the two loops that I am using. The outer loop is for n. 
and the inner loop is for x probably should have used the variables n and x over here for better visibility for every n or i in this case there will be multiple x between 0 and i here is our main condition so if uh, n divided by x or i divided by j gives the remainder as 0 and the value in the cell at index n minus x or i minus j in this case is false then we are going to assign true to the cell at index i and once we have found out that Alice can win the game for this particular i or n then we are going to break out of the inner loop all right finally we'll print the value of the cell of the dp array at index n which is 6 in our case so let's run this program and check the output must come out as true and there you go the value of the cell in this dp array at index 6 comes out as true which we just saw when we solved the problem of divisor game using the dynamic programming algorithm with this we have come to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed learning to solve this amazing dynamic programming problem i'll see you in the next video of choice tech goodbye and take very good care of yourself